You should be watching it actually. Go to the link. Oh no, screw it up. Huh? Oh yeah, we'll do. Look at the. Uh, I really like the graphic. <laughs> oh, it's cool. But if you do it by having muted. Yep. Yep. He didn't. He didn't mute us yet. Nope, nope, oh, nope. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, you'll, you'll hear our music for a couple minutes during that time we're sharing on the socials, and then uh, we will be right back. Cool. Every 10 or 15 years, a film is produced that is so overwhelming, so forceful in its impact that it becomes deeply embedded in the mind. Persons under 18 will not be admitted. this experience more enjoyable for everyone. We hope you'll refrain from crying during the show. Enjoy the movie. Thank you. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. 
we have very active lifestyles. It's not all wandering the countryside aimlessly or scaring passing motorists. And we all love a good cup of joe. And there's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds Coffee is my guilty pleasure. Bold, robust, delicious. It's coffee that can wake the dead. <laughs> With over a dozen different roasts and flavors, Deadly Grounds can satisfy the most finicky of coffee addicts. The aroma is so intoxicating, it brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. Hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. You're watching Still Token With. My name is Leo. I'm the monkey behind the keyboard here. We have an awesome show scheduled for you, as always. And uh, Benjamin, how's it going? It's going amazingly great. Amazingly great. Yeah. We're going to go with amazingly great. Amazingly why, great. Why, why not? Why not? Yeah. Okay, well, th those are two words. Well, well, first of all, it's Wednesday. <laughs> so that means we're live. And we're running on another new platform tonight, which... Welcome, everybody, from the madness side of things. Uh, but I'm super stoked to to chat with our guest tonight, man. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm just going to leave it right there. I'm just super stoked to chat with our guest tonight. I'm going to let Jeff butcher his name. Okay, super stoked and amazingly great. Mr. Jeff Ray. Hey, how's everybody doing out there? Hey. Happy Wednesday. Hump day. Wednesday is hump day, right? Yeah, Wednesday is hump day. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this show. Uh, I've been, you know, looking this guy up. Uh, I couldn't find any crap though, which kind of sucks. Ha! So maybe, maybe I'll butcher his name. Maybe I won't. But let's bring him in, Julian Seeger. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm having an amazingly great day too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's all right. I'm, go I'm, I'm going to find the weirdest most disgusting type of food I can and have you challenge that. Oh, shit. Okay. I, I don't turn down type of challenges, really. So, but good luck because I've eaten most of it already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but see, when I, when I say the mealworms, I'm going to they have to be live. <laughs> oh, I did eat. I did eat a live one. Much I, of my disgust. But, uh, yeah, they still went down. I just chewed them a little more. But, but anyway, I'd like to start this show by, uh, you know, it's weird me interviewing three people at the same time um, by by saying, like, I, you know, I don't really want to talk about weed, but I'm on a show called Still Token. So I don't really know what I'm doing here. I appreciate the invite. And I know that it's an interview, but why? What, I don't know much about your show. So why is your show called Still Token? I think this should be a point that one of you guys actually just – inhales or something i don't know or whatever you do <laughs> there you go i mean i spotted you had tommy chong on the show yeah and i was like oh, okay that's cool i've been i've been a cheech and chong fan for life that's how i know all about um weed i've never seen it myself in real life obviously <laughs> but uh but you know it's like i've seen the movies right. and I'm, I'm a seth rogan fan and uh you know who else like um snoop Represent. Uh, <laughs> I the other day. Sorry, chips. So, but yeah. So, what, tell 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 me and the viewers where still token come from. We're on season three. I need to catch up. So uh, that's good. So introduce yourselves, please. So <laughs> you want you want to take the reins? Or you want me to go? No, go ahead. So still token with um, derives from a comic book that Jeff and I created, wrote, and produced, which is now five issues out, called Toking with the Dead, which is where we took cannabis and zombies and mixed it. <laughs> okay. But we didn't realize it was going to snowball the way it did, so we put ourselves as the main characters in the comic book series. Cool. Um, long story short, uh, the novel hopefully will be out next year, which is the first five comics. We've released two episodes of the live-action TV series. The third, fourth, and fifth are being filmed in production right now. Uh, and we just launched the animation pitch uh, a couple weeks ago. 
Okay, well, yeah, man, I'm sold already. I, I was um, reading the, Kirk, the Kirkman comics before The Walking Dead came out, and I was a massive fan of that. And and uh, for years, I was thinking this would be like the best zombie soap opera in the world, you know? And then they did release it, and then they kind of fucked it up a bit. But, um, but you know, it's just, like, just a little, a bit. Yeah, 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 but it started well, didn't it? So well, it did, it did. And but... it ended up like a bit of a wet fart. Right, <laughs> right. But, uh, well, not, not to derail, but have you seen the the uh, the images for the new show that they're going to make? No, is it the team one? Uh, it, it's it's in the city, and uh, it has Maggie and Negan. They're going to be yeah. their own show. Uh, but there's like power on in the city, and she's like a bartender, I think. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's all I know. Sheldon would be rolling in his grave if he was dead. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. Continue, Ben. I, I just needed. To well, say. it's funny that you bring up The Walking Dead because when we first released this four years ago, Jeff. Yeah. So when we first released, we've only been out for four years with the comics and the TV series and all that. We came out as The Talking Dead, and we got our trademark, and we actually fought AMC Robert Kirkman and The Walking Dead for two and a half years to keep our trademark. Yeah. Because they said weed was illegal and on a federal level, we shouldn't have a trademark. Little did they know that we were just going to keep going. We tweaked the name. They signed off. And here we are today as Toking with the Dead. Congrats, man. Oh, I love it. Right. It's like, right. and I'm a big zombie fan. Um, I, I like weed in pop culture. Never taken it myself. Um, but, you know. <laughs> well, this, Maybe one day I'd like to. Yeah. There's nothing Where funnier people. than a stone zombie, so. Well, right. Stone right. zombies are great. I mean, they've already got the munchies. How does that work? So our our twist and premise to it is, you know, you can when you get them high, whether it's, you know, cannabis or CBDs or whatever you're using on them, they want Twinkies, cupcakes, they bounce off walls. But when they come down from the high, subconsciously they realized it alleviated the pain they had for flesh. Ah, yeah. there's there's a medicinal aspect to it. Right. Now they want our weed. Now they want our weed and we're screwed. Oh, no. That's terrible. I bet Snoop, Snoop Dogg's got like a proper mansion set up with like big gun towers and shit. And Mike Tyson, actually. Like Tyson Ranch is probably the safest place to be, even though it's the most dangerous at the same time. But yeah, I don't think those guys would mess about in the apocalypse. So, oh, no, they, it, But they like to share their weed from what we see, so maybe they would. Yeah, you know, yeah, I don't know. But I haven't, I haven't met either of those guys yet. But that would be, that would be a good thing. I think that I'll, I'll put that on my bucket list. Hmm. And I, I remember you specifically saying to me before we started, I don't want to talk about weed, and here we are talking about weed. Well, we're so, not talking about, we're not talking about weed per se. Um, I'm just, I'm just saying that I was asking you questions about your, uh, okay, the name. You know, <laughs> yeah, and I thought it would be ironic to. But the only thing I said, oh, let's not talk about weed, but it's called token, like, you know, and it's like, right. you know, if I didn't know what weed was, I wouldn't know what token was, would I? So it's, uh, it's, it, I just thought it was funny. Yeah. And this is the, the British irony that I tell you that I don't want to talk about something and I immediately go in with that. So whilst opening a can of beer. <laughs> bravo, so, bravo. Yeah, um, you know, I like to start as a means to go on. <laughs> But the show, the show itself um, is really about our guests. So we try to reach out and find amazing guests that have amazing stories. And they could be an actor. It could be somebody that's using cannabis for curing themselves. It could be somebody that was incarcerated for murder. Um, if they have authors. a great story, authors, yep, writers, cartoonists, creators. You could literally get one person that's got all those skill sets, actually. Oh, we did. Yeah, it was Tommy Chong. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> who did he murder? <laughs> no, you'd have to get Danny Trejo for that. That's true. That's true. You know. I love but, you, Danny, by the way. That wasn't a diss. Oh, yeah. No, no. Yeah, me, me and Danny did time together. So, <laughs> do so, tell. Do tell. <laughs> well, I was, at, I was at a rap party for Death Race 4. Um, I played a fireman in that movie and we were in Bulgaria and, and Danny was at the rap high and uh, so but he, di he didn't remember me so which is cool because like he sees 
thousands of people, you know? So, but he's a, he's a nice guy. I knew he was a nice guy because I'd worked with him previously, but he, did, he didn't remember. So, uh, but I, so we were at the rap party and I, I said, oh, hi, Danny, nice to see you again. And then, um, and he kind of just smiled and shook my hand and give me the respectful, you know, back rub or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> that sounds dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we, we you know we did the half hug thing you know uh, yeah yep so and then i was in the half hug and I, I leaned in and just whispered i went hey danny um we we did time together and, and he was like what where <laughs> and then and then he was like san quentin <laughs> and uh and i said no nah, it wasn't san quentin he was like where man and uh, and I was like, no, you, you got a guess. And uh, he's like, oh, I can't. And he's like looking at me. He's trying to assess my age and stuff like that because obviously he's not done time for years, like decades. So and then uh, he said, oh, I'll give up. And and I says, um, oh, this is an 18 rated show, isn't it? So I can swear. So yeah. I, I, I said to Danny, the motherfucking gulag man. And he's like, the Muppets. <laughs> But I was like, yeah, I was I was one of the prisoners in the Muppets, where, and I led the prison escape. So we're in the Muppets movie together. So that's really gangster, isn't it? That's that's <laughs> actually really cool. That's really <laughs> it's cool. cool. But that's, that's really I don't cool. think there's many people that could um, actually walk up to Danny Trejo as an actor and say we did time together, a, and as a, a as actual an, a, as an actual fact. Right. So it doesn't matter that it was a Muppets prison, and that uh, we were in prison with loads of Muppets and stuff. Uh, you know, but it's, yeah, so that's it. So <laughs> I told you I had loads of weird stories. They just spin off. That's so, fucked up, dude. That's, that's, that's beautiful. That's that's the beauty of our show. It's so it's unscripted, and this is this is what it's all about. You know. Well, well let's face it. Life is ups, unscripted, bro. You know. Right. 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 Absolutely. So, unless you don't, Johnny Depp. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, I don't know where that came from. I, I love Johnny Depp too. Uh, uh, apparently, apparently a lot of people do because that whole trial of his turned his uh you know turned his um uh the perception of him uh, totally around yeah i think i think that johnny Depp moment fell out of my face because um there was a quote where he said that um he's fed up with the film industry a few years ago because he speaks more scripted words than he does have conversations Mm-hmm. Like, you know, normal conversations. And he said he was just getting, I think he was just overworked at the time. And I was just like, wow, I'd have to have a lot of dialogue to do that because I can talk a lot. So, you know. Oh, but, yeah, uh, you can. I, I've, wa- I've watched you do your food channel on YouTube. Yeah. And did, you're, you're you. no co-host or host with you. You just, you talk to the camera. And it's like three and a half hours later, you're still eating worms. I'm like, man. I know, man. It's like uh, it's a, it's a it's a cross I have to bear. Like uh, I I caught what well, it's like. What well, yeah? So I'm just looking at Harry Pretty Girl now. Like but I I suffer from something. Um, I don't know whether Americans even use this terminology, but I suffer from something called verbal diarrhea, um, <laughs> which is you know is um, the guy right there. These kind of things. But, uh, but like, you know, at least I, I don't get a bad breath with it, which is good. True. It, it, but it's just like, you know, it's just that kind of thing. Well, you got to learn how to let that out the back end before you open your mouth, dude. Yeah, exactly, man. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very, um, I'm very talented in that area. <laughs> now, now I, I, I hopped on YouTube and I, I watched, uh, I watched a couple of little things, you know, just before the show, but. My question is, I did, I really didn't know that nose hairs were that fucking tough. Oh my days! I almost pulled my brain out. <laughs> <laughs> On the wax challenge. <laughs> I'm like, what right, the fuck is I, this I, dude that, doing? That look of fear, right? That look of fear. Well, I don't act on my YouTube channel. Is like, I started it in the winter because I was just bored, and I was I was watching all these YouTube channels about food, and I just thought, do you know what? I could do that. It's like, why am I watching it? I I need to watch it and make some. So I had these grandiose ideas that I could do the food challenges and stuff where I could eat, like, the big amounts because I love my food. But, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't have a 
YouTube for food channel. And uh, but then I realised that I can speed eat, like so I can eat fast. And uh, and I've beaten a couple of the um, the big names, um, but I can't. When I watch the bulk stuff, I mean, just generally eating a lunch out in America for me is a food challenge. So <laughs> when, let alone doing a food challenge, it's like your portions are so massive anyway. And I thought, now for my health and stuff, that's not going to be good for me. So I just, I still wanted to carry on. So I started mucking about with different formats of food reviews and stuff like that. And so I went with the gross foods and stuff like that. So, and the hot foods, because I like my spice. But, um, but yeah, so I'm, I, I don't know whether I'm the only person on the planet to do it. I'm sure someone has been as stupid as me. But I did, there's a, a thing called the Death Nut 3 um, challenge by, what's his name? The guy that, Johnny yeah, Johnny Scoville set it up. So it's a Death Nut 3 challenge, and it is 16 million Scovilles. Is uh, is the hottest nuts in the packet, and I think there were six six nuts, not nuts, like six packets of nuts that you had to do to get to this really really hot one. And um, so I decided that because um, Booty Girl did the, I'm pointing that way, she's over there. So she did the the, the one chip challenge, and then I'm not going to embarrass her by saying what happened but it wasn't pleasant um <laughs> so and it was pretty pretty damn quick <laughs> so it, it like i wish it was in, it was in and out that's all i can say she did it she did the challenge total respect for her for doing it but then when um the when it, the packy one chip thing was exiting her she said that's the last hot challenge i do so I bought the definite free challenge and it was a two man thing as in so or two uh, person of unknown gender or whatever you want to say a, a two people kit and because you weren't doing it booty girl would just refuse because like, she was so ill from the last hot challenge I decided to do the hottest chili challenge in the world known to man twice so I did all of the packets that so were meant you're meant to do it as a challenge with your friends so but i didn't have any friends that were stupid <laughs> enough to do it and so so i so i so i did it on my own and uh, now i only saw i i was in a chili shop yesterday actually in austin and i saw that packet and i was just like whoa so <laughs> I, I, I don't do peanuts anymore because a corn chip that's really hot is digestible or throw up a ball, easy, you know, or whatever else, a ball. But um, <laughs> nuts, they, especially when you do the, what, you know, I mean, there were over 100 of these nuts in the entire pack. Yeah. There were like 25 in each flavor, I reckon. It was insane when we when we added it up. And, and 16 million Scovilles, it's pretty damn hot when you consider that a jalapeno is 200,000 Scovilles. Yep. You know, it's it's almost unfathomable. So, so I did that, and then I was ill for twenty seven hours. The video that on my channel does show. That. I think the worst thing is that halfway through the five minutes that you meant to sit there for five minutes with nothing, no water or anything, my camera ran out of space, and I didn't know because I was in so much pain. <laughs> so it stopped recording, and so I was literally just salivating, uh, you know, like a dog drooling. And, uh, and then I looked at the camera. I was like, "Oh shit! It stopped recording." So then I had to quickly delete a load of stuff. <laughs> nice one, thanks, thanks, Ben. So yeah, he's he's witnessed me eating. So that's uh, yeah, he can testify to that. But but yeah, and then I made another error. I didn't have any milk in the house at all. So I had ice cream, half a tub of Ben and Jerry's. That was it. So we didn't prep for it. I was just really dumb. And uh, but now I, I don't mind eating hot food, but I'm not doing hot peanuts again because I felt every single millimeter of them in entering my body and exiting my body. Oh. <laughs> 27 hours of not actually being able to speak and literally just rocking backwards and forwards in, in agony every 20 minutes. 
but like was unbearable. I, I watched these other these professional Chileans, and they literally they they chug like like whatever two gallons of milk, and it they it all comes up. Nothing I could do could get these up, so I had to suffer that. So I'm not doing peanuts anymore. So don't set me a peanut challenge. So because uh, I'm I'm sworn off them, and uh, Booty Girl actually took the video of me rolling rolling around crying. I was crying. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. So you know it's uh, yeah, it, it was it was worse than childbirth. So <laughs> and I've only had two children. So like you know, but yeah, it was it was worse than that apparently. <laughs> I, I don't know if this would help, but I know with dogs, you give them, <laughs> if you need them to throw up, like if they've eaten something they shouldn't, you give them peroxide. So I don't know if that would work on a human. Man, I, tried everything. I literally had my whole fist down my throat. Well, like, I mean, how, grabbing my tonsils and eating, drinking, like, I didn't realize that soy milk didn't work. No. It, it has to be cow's milk because it's the lipids in the fat that. But I don't think anything would have worked because it was a peanut. And bearing in mind, I'm trying to eat them as quick as possible. So I probably wasn't chewing them as much as I do them. So I was swallowing a whole nut. Which then, yeah. So I don't recommend anyone to try the death nut challenge at all. Don't try and beat me. This isn't a, a competition. I was a fucking idiot. <laughs> so don't be me. Do some of the challenges, but don't do the nuts because you will grow. So and if you do do it, tag me in. Saying, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Like, you know, <laughs> and be honest. It's, 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 um, I see it for sale and I'm just like, wow, that really shouldn't be for sale. So, now, 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 my fear with hot stuff, I love hot stuff. Well, I we just have don't our own like hot it. Sauce. I just, yeah, I just don't like when it comes out the other side. Yeah, I think, I think my body's there's nothing you can do that. about that. Yeah, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't affect me as much. Like, um, so I have hot sauce. On pretty much everything I eat, apart from ice cream, but that's just because I haven't tried that yet. So, hey, we got any ice cream? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I want to back up for a second. So, so you said uh, uh, American portions are are so large. W w like na name drop. Like what? What? Uh... Um, name drop. What? Like just. A place that has large portions. Well, that that you consider is like you know unedible. Like I know Texas Roadhouse, like like the chicken critters. You know, I can't finish a full one. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's it's tricky. Isn't it? I would literally say the whole of the USA, apart from if you're eating in one of these like fine dining experiences where they're bringing out like little entrees and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. So, so no, I did actually finish an entire breakfast today. That was pretty good. But it was um, a breakfast I've been craving. So it was corned beef hash. It was um, yeah. It was like hash browns, which I hadn't had for like four years, maybe. Oh, like nice. you know, real, real hash browns, mm -hmm. and uh, just like two fried eggs over easy and uh, and sourdough. But it was just literally that perfect four piece combo for me that where I probably could have eaten double that amount. I must admit. That sounds because, so good. like, but so that was that was that was cool, but that was just a, a, a small breakfast. So, but every time we go, but I'm also a buffet expert, so we but we're trying to eat healthy. But um, so we found a couple of places locally that, that do um, you know, like uh, salad buffets and stuff. And when I said that I was craving salad, I think it was yesterday or the day before, uh, a friend of mine over here was like craving salad he's like my food eats salad you know <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but i don't think that he i don't think that this particular guy he's a legend but i, I don't I, I don't think he, he doesn't look like a salad eater so you know it's so but the thing is that it's really difficult to especially in texas and in georgia especially especially as well to find anything that isn't like deep fried so and i'm not slate in deep fried food because I know they do it really well but there comes a point in your week when you you I personally crave like you know I, I, I don't fry at home so I have an air fryer 
you know. So anything that I want crunchy goes in the air fryer. So um, so we we don't cook with oil. It's just very minimal. So it's a bit of a, a culture shock on your body cultures to just literally be eating fried food all the time. So, you know, we've done a couple of days of that, but we needed to find these salad bars, you know. But anyway, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm the master of the buffet, you know. I build, like, buffet, like, it, it, I could literally build a buffet that will go up like a castle. So I put walls up, and it's like, it's like, so my salad was like this high. And I couldn't, I had a huge double takeout box. So I ate my salad. And, uh, but I, mean, I ordered a child sized pizza. So to go with my salad, which was a child's meal. And they said strictly no under 12s. So when I ordered it, I said, well, mentally, I am under 12. <laughs> uh, so they gave me this pepperoni pizza and then I got a salad buffet that I was deleting I, I managed to finish it yesterday you know? yeah. but it was like okay. um, I'll, I'll put it I'll put it on the channel probably I took a picture of it just because it's like it was ridiculous it was like the size of my head so, <laughs> but it was but that was that was all salad <laughs> but then we went in Denny's the other day oh and Denny's is a weird one no, not Denny. Sorry. Where did we go? Golden Corral. Just yeah. because I wanted a uh, foodie girl to experience Golden Corral because I think if you guys all been. Yeah. Yep. So I think it's an American institution and everyone has to go at least once just to know what it is. You know, it's like you can't not do a Golden Corral buffet. But I realized after, you know, because I've been coming over um, to the States since the 90s, I realized that. With the with the golden corral buffets, I love the fact that we haven't talked about movies or anything yet. It's, uh, <laughs> the, the golden corral buffets. You spend if you go round and you get a plate of food, you just basically on that first plate, it's like a reconnaissance mission. So so you're going out and you're putting things on your plate to work out, like you're basically trying to find something palatable. Right. Uh, it's like so. I think that on this visit. I think maybe because my palate's a little bit more educated, that about seventy five percent of the stuff on my plate was shit. <laughs> it's like, but the twenty five percent of the stuff that was golden that was really nice was um, was like, but it's really hard to find. And then the problem is with that is by the time you've waded through all the shit to find the good stuff, you're full up. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, their fish is amazing, but I couldn't eat another thing. So it's like, uh, I don't know. I think that's what happens with the casual, occasional Golden Corral customer. Yeah. But I think the people that really know their shit that go in like once a week to feed their kids and stuff, um, they probably know exactly what's good. So, you know. Well, if, if you're ever up in the New England area, check out the Nordic Lodge. You have to, you'll have to message me that afterwards so that I'll remember. Cause I'll, yeah, the, Nord I'll the Nordic watch Lodge. I'll into you again. Yep, it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. You have a time limit, though, because it's <laughs> it, it's it's lobster, crab legs, <laughs> filet mignons. It's all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's cool. Now I love seafood, so um, yeah, it, it, you know I'm looking I'm looking forward to that. So the, the problem we've got in Texas is all the seafood buffets are Asian related. You know, food <laughs> don't really go for Asian food. So right, it's, yeah, no, it's class classic stuff there. I'll send yeah, you a yeah. link to it. No, I, I, anything anything uh, seafood, any mollusks, literally. I really love octopuses, but I only stopped eating octopi and stuff like that for about six months after watching that Netflix doc documentary. Did you watch that yeah. with the? What was it called? My Friend the Octopus. That was it, wasn't it? It was yeah. as simple as that. So he made friends with an octopus, and it was really cute. It was like the octopus was like a little dog. So for about six months, I was like, man, how could I eat something like that? They're so intelligent. And then six months later, I was like, oh, I really want some octopus. So I was like, you know, I was kind of over that. I did the same with bacon. I had, <laughs> I had pizza's pets, and I didn't eat bacon for about two years. Oh, God, I had bacon on my breakfast this morning. <laughs> 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 
Bacon's a staple. <laughs> oh. Uh. <clears throat> well, you're killing me. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had to say anything all night so far. He's just just talk to him about food. See, folks, that's all you get. Oh, do. Just yeah. But well, there you go. I'll, I'll, you've got questions for me. Oh, do you like my t-shirt? Boba yeah. Fett. Oh, nice. So, Boba like, you, know, yeah. there you go. I was just about to give you a question, but then I popped it because I looked at my t-shirt in the, in the morning. I was like, yeah, I like, I like this. But um, Boba Fett was um, my favorite character in Star Wars from when I was a kid. And uh, then, as an adult, I ended up being friends with Jerry Bullock, who played Boba Fett, like because of doing comic cons and stuff like. That. Right. So, and so I ended up becoming friends with him and his wife Maureen. And what, what a guy! He's amazing. So I, I, he passed, oh, eighteen months ago now. So, and the first thing I did is I went out and bought a really nice picture of Boba Fett and put it on my wall in my house. So, but yeah, this this guy was a legend and he's still my favorite uh, Star Wars character. So, and so I had, to, I bought this when I was in the States. It's the only, it's the only t-shirt I've bought so far. Yeah, so it was this one. So that's why I'm, wear, I'm wearing it for Jeremy. Because I noticed also um, when I got a friend's request, request from... Um, you, I think it was you, Jeff. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, in the background, there was a picture of you guys at a Comic Con, and right in the centre is my friend Spencer. Yep. It was right. Spencer Baldy. So I didn't even know you guys did Comic Con and stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Spencer... yeah. I also work as a voice actor. So. Yes, you do. Yes. Yeah, we didn't get into. We haven't gotten into that yet. Because <laughs> I. I'm at that point where um, stuff like I, I would want to do that show just because it sounds awesome. It's like it's, it's right up my alley. So, you know, right. I, I, don't, I hope that translates well. Oh, yeah. Because there's some things that don't translate well. I didn't know whether that phrase would translate well into American right up my alley. It, it could be misconstrued. It's like when you're English and you smoke cigarettes and you come over to the States and you're in California and you say to someone, oh, that's smoking and you haven't got cigarettes. Oh, do you mind if I buy my bag? You know? So some things just don't translate. Right, so, right. So yeah, you we, say bum a fag in the US. No, to bum <laughs> in England is is to like have or steal yeah. or just be cheeky. And yeah. a fag is a cigarette. Yes. So, you know, so I only ever said uh, can I buy my flag once in the States? Uh, yeah. Anyway, but that's another story. And I know this is 18 rated, but yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> that's anyway, so I don't have to buy my flags. So it's great. So, but speaking of filming and Spencer and friends and Comic Cons, <laughs> how did you land a role on Vikings Valhalla? By working my fucking ass off, <laughs> um, not bumming fags. But um, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> no, I, I. It was a a long long story, really. But to cut it short, um, I wanted to get on the show, so I had. Um, I kind of researched the agent that uh, I wanted, approached that that agent who's, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to name drop on here because he'll get <laughs> inundated with with people wanting that want to get on the show, messaging him. So, but anyone with IMDb Pro can check who I'm with. Um, so I really liked this particular agent. I like the idea of him. I like that he is stable of actors and actresses that he had. And I also liked his working connections. So I kind of went backwards and worked out after death race for um, who who I was getting to see as casting directors, mm -hmm. you know, when I was getting auditions. And then I worked my way backwards to work out what agents they were using, the, the people that were wanting to see me all the time. Yeah, so, smart. I mean, everyone, everyone says... Oh, how'd you get an agent? How'd you do this? How'd you do that? And it's like, 
the truth is there's there is no um there is no path every actor and actress is half is individual based on them mm -hmm. so um so i i found a guy that i really like the look of um he's got smarts he's 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 a good agent he's daring he thinks outside the box and i knew he had a good relate working relationship because half of his stable of actors and actresses have been on vikings so and i thought well that's it and so i had a meeting with him and he basically just said to me i'm going to get you on vikings I mean, I don't know why. I don't look anything like one. No, but, not, um, not at all. No, but, uh, <laughs> no, you look more like a dwarf. Yeah, exactly, man. I should have been in Lord of the Means, but um, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's yeah, that, that's you. the next one. You can go for that one. You can you know? go for Power of the Rings, the new Netflix show. Yeah, it's I I, I don't know. It's like we we're, we're only. Is that the one that's coming out, or is that the one we're watching? Okay, yeah, we watched four episodes, but then we got dark, and we started watching Dharma on Netflix. Because mm. it, so, it, yeah, because that pertained to food. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> I feel like I've got more in common with him, just because I like my stuff medium rare as well. Um, and yeah, it's like. No, I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm totally down with Lord of the Rings, but I think um, I don't know what the crack is, whether it's filmed in New Zealand and stuff like that. But I haven't had any casting calls for anything like that. So, but but yeah, I auditioned a lot for um, for Vikings. So, <laughs> and uh, but I knew that they they were looking for a part for me. So I knew they was just waiting. For the, the right part to land, so you know, because like some of the auditions were ridic ridiculous. I had to, I auditioned for a Mongol lord, you know, right? As in, you know, an Asian Mongol <laughs> warlord, and I'm like, okay. And I realised that they were testing me to see what I would do with the audition. So I put I put my all into it, and like you know. And I knew that I wasn't going to get a part of a Mongol lord. I mean, that's some serious time in makeup, isn't it? To make, to make right. me look like a Mongol lord. Right. And, uh, but I knew they were just testing me. And I, I, I appreciated that. And I thought it was funny. But I still took it very seriously, which is what they wanted to see. They wanted to see what my act, acting chops were, you know. And so right. they kept chucking things at me. And it was right at the end of Vikings. And I was like, I don't want to be in the last one or two episodes of Vikings. Like, I, like you know, so I was auditioning respectfully yeah. and giving it my all, but I didn't want it. I wanted Vikings Valhalla because I knew it would be a new... A new season. breed, yeah. And then, the, and then the fuckers killed me in episode two. Oops, spoiler. Um, <laughs> I wasn't even going to give it away. <laughs> uh, but then, there you go. So, but I had a glorious death. They, like, um, it's, it's one of those... It's like I didn't even find out until episode two. I thought I, I thought this is this is going to be like my life for the next five years now. <laughs> so, well, you never know. Been, but it's like at the end of the day, um, I got uh, Jeb Stewart, the writer of Die Hard, say, "Ah, uh, we we fucked up. We we took you out too soon because we were really enjoying your performance and your interpretation of your Bourne. Yeah. Like, uh, and they, they said we should have had you on for at least a season. And I was like, yeah, I agree. But because they're on such a, a tight schedule, they can't change the script because they like someone. But, you know, I might come back as my, you know, long lost brother or a cousin. They could always dye your hair, your hair yeah, no. whiter. And it's only hair, up, as David, for, for the, you back as an older. Can give me a year of work. Right, right. <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, I, I was big into Vikings. First of all, I, I loved the show. Um, then, then when Vikings Valhalla came out, I was like, oh, I gotta watch this. And then I saw you, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. Oh, but they fucking killed him. <laughs> I, you know, it's the, the problem is when you pick an argument with the lead actor, you know you're gonna lose. You know. But I, I did ask all very well. I thought, I thought, um, you know, I enjoyed the character. It's the sort of character I like playing. Um, you know, I, I, 
I just I like playing the irritant or the the psycho, the guy that just has his own set of rules and doesn't give a fuck about anyone else's. And right. Uh, right. and I was very pagan. I, and it wasn't it wasn't difficult for me to get into that role. <laughs> well, I mean, you look the part no matter what. So I mean, but yeah. Uh, but- my heritage is actually that anyway. So my, my surname is Seager. Um, if you tr- if you translate it, C is C, and and Ger G E R means spear. So my surname is C split spear or C warrior. So it literally translates to to Viking. Right. So that that and it's one of the oldest names in Norse history. So and uh, you know it wasn't it wasn't made up. It's like that is that is my my name, and right. uh, all of my family have been uh, man of, men of men of the sea. So you know, in the in the navy and stuff like that, for going back generations, literally generation on generation on generation. But um, but Vikings were cool because I was literally in Catacat, in you know, in the halls of Catacat. Like yeah. uh, you know, I think I was the first person to. Um, to, yeah, I was the first person to name Ragnar Lothbrok in Vikings Valhalla as well, because like you know, I, I mentioned his name that yep. these are all of our ancestors and Ragnar Lothbrok because I'm the pagan one. I don't know where these Christian Vikings come from or what. I mean, it didn't really work out too well for him, did it? This faith. It. Well, no, you, you you took him out and he took you out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But and you God. both got xed off the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it shit happens, doesn't it? So, but there you go. It's funny, the actor the actor didn't like me because he knew I was due to kill him. And I'm like, hang on a minute, we're actors. <laughs> right? right? Oh, it's just, it's really funny when people get, um, like, you know, when, when they get possessive of the character because you can't, you, you don't own that character. You just have to play that character as well as you can. Right. And uh, I remember going back over a decade now. Oh, I've never been killed in the movie yet. And then I ended up getting killed about fourteen times in one day. And I and I was just like, oh, I'm over that. You know, it's like. And then I've been I've been the guy that I always like in a, in a role like that. I always get somebody, but then I always get got in the end. So you know, right. I think I survived in penitent because they were still hunting me down as a war criminal. Right, so, right. Yeah, we were going to bring up penitent, um, amongst a, a ton of other things. We'll get into penitent, penitent in a second because that has just been released on Blu-ray. Yeah, yeah, uh, and that is also on Amazon Prime as well. Amazon Prime in the states. Right, right. Right. Leo's looking sure for they... the trailer. Yep, Leo's looking for the trailer. The trailer's out there somewhere, Leo. Uh, well, he looks for that. But you've played in a ton of stuff. I mean, you've been in Miracle Workers. You were in Cursed, another show yep. that I watch. I love that show. Oh, um, um, Miracle Workers is awesome. Yep. And Doc Martin. Oh, I love Doc Martin. Yeah, man. 10 years on Doc Martin. Yeah. And like, I'm, I missed that. They, I think, <laughs> do you know what? They, they've said it's the last season. This season, I didn't, I didn't get on it. So I was talking to the director and he's like, oh, we've got to get you in because it's the last season. And then the role didn't come up to fit me. Um, so I missed out on that one. But they've been saying it's the last season for the last eight years. Yep. So it wouldn't surprise me if in two years I get a phone call saying, oh, do you want to come back on Dot Mine? I'm like, well, I thought you finished. But, yeah, of course I'll come back. It's, right. um, it's a lot of fun. So the cast are great. I get on well with all of them. Um, so, yeah, it's cool. Oh, look, Ben's just part of the link for Penitent. Yep. So he's a good lad, Ben. There you go. So there's the link right there in the chat. Yeah. I, I saw the private chat that you guys had a couple days ago when you announced being on the show, and he said, do you want me to sit in with you? <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no, he's, he's a good lad. And also, my mate Robbie's in here as well. So uh, right. they're, probably, they're probably the only two people in here watching from my side of the line. So uh, like, everyone to say hello and introduce yourself in the chat. I see, so. I see, I see some other people in here. There's always people in there. Just a oh, lot yeah. of people just sit quiet. They don't type. They don't chat. They don't do anything. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of people watching. A lot of comments. And I know there's a lot of comments coming in from other sides that we don't oh, cool. see. Um, 
because it's not one of the major platforms. So what happens with the video afterwards? Does it go on YouTube? Oh yeah, this is on uh, this is on YouTube. It's on multiple YouTube channels, multiple Facebook channels, uh, a ton of. It'll also be broadcasting. Archived. It'll be archived uh, on our website after tonight. It'll also be on IMDb tomorrow. Cool. So, yeah. So you got an IMDb credit from us. Oh well, that's cool. <laughs> Everyone loves an IMDb credit. This right? can this this can um, make up for all the ones I deleted last week. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! <laughs> uh, IMDb find... is like I'm a dead body, right? Yes. Yeah, it can be. It, yeah. Like um, that's a dating site, though. Um, oh, so uh, I, yeah, I yeah, that, that, that might be something that you want to erase from your history. Uh, but IMDb is the Internet Movie Database, so it's like uh, it's, it's not I'm a dead body. That's the that's the Jeffrey Dahmer uh, dating site. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, find that trailer, Leo? Uh, yes, but you can't just snap a finger and put it in. I'm just asking a question, man. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I see it. I can see it in the glasses. It's, it's, I can see everything. So tell us a little, tell us a little bit about Penitent while we wait for Leo to find the trailer and get it ready. Penitent was a really long time coming because it was an independent movie that we all did for, for love and not money. Um, and it was just, but the thing is, it, it's got a really powerful message. So it was, um, it was written by uh, Martin Webster, um, who was like, he, he, he was a Serbian soldier in Iraq. Um, he has his own personal story as well. And there's another, there's, a, there's another, can you look up the Martin Webster um, documentary that he wrote as well? Because he was, um, Oh, man, I could talk about this for hours. We did you could do a, a thing about it, but trying to trying to get it down in a nutshell is that mine like was a frontline soldier in, in Iraq, you know, numerous tours and saw and did things that we as human beings aren't really programmed to do unless you have been a, a frontline soldier, you know. So but mine was also part of um the documentary that's also on Amazon, a uh, diary of a disgraced soldier. And um, so he was um, removed from the army and then like basically hauled over the coals, um, went to like a military court and stuff like that, just for videoing um, an Iraqi teenager getting, getting the crap kicked out of him. But the story that the, and and laughing. But what the thing is, what what people don't realise is, if you're, you're a frontline soldier and you've been like in a war zone for weeks and weeks and months and months. Uh, yeah, that's it. And you diary of a disgraced soldier. Um, that you know, it changes your mindset. You're on high alert all the time, and you're so used to people around you getting killed. You know and you and, and you retaliating against that. I think this, the the story that the unheard story from that side of it was that, that they were trying to hold a, a bridge and they kept sending civilians across the bridge in like a riot. So the the British soldiers weren't firing into the civilians, but then what the the terrorists would do, they would hand these teenagers grenades so and molotovs and stuff like that. So so from, uh, you know, that kind of rioting scene, like, you know, there was almost like a demonstration and a show of, like, you know, solidarity and whatever. Um, the, the, you know, the guys that were there were riot shields were all of a sudden facing molotovs and hand grenades and stuff like that, and people were killed. So when they found one of the teenagers that they knew had been throwing grenades and like, you know, he basically got taken out and he was beaten up and uh, Martin was a guy that recorded it and they all knew what they were doing. They knew that, you know, and, and he got um, what, what discharged from the army for that and then came home, not only with PTSD because of what I'd witnessed, but also 
with a, a sense of shame because he, at the end of the day, he's just doing his job, you know? So um, he wasn't the one beating him up, but the kid had been throwing grenades and it's, it's a, one of those moments where, you know, tensions are really high and, you know, when you look at what's going on in the world at the moment, it's, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, like a kid got beaten up. Uh, you know, there wasn't missiles being fired from one country to another and everything else. And all he did was make a video. And it's like, so he went on to th then try and fight out against that. But then he wanted to, he said he was done with camouflage. Well, I met Martin on another movie. Um, over a decade ago, and ironically, he was uh, dressed in camouflage. He was uh, he was playing part of the zombies. We were doing fight scenes and stuff like that. And uh, so he, he he seemed like a really good lad. And that was where we met on something called Eve, um, which is actually on YouTube because it never got released on TV. Um, and yeah, we just said that we would work together. So he was. So he said he was done with camouflage. He didn't didn't want to wear a uniform again, but then realised that he had a film to make about uh, post traumatic stress disorder. So and he wanted me to be the antagonist and the guy that causes the post traumatic stress disorder. So we made a film about the Bosnian War. Um, I play a Bosnian war criminal. Um, yeah. So called uh, Barbatov. Sounds a bit like Gorbachev, but yeah. But um, the Barbatov, actually, General Barbatov. And it's the film gave me PTSD, actually making it. Right. So, so it was pretty brutal. It was pretty, I don't know. It's a weird thing when you point a firearm at someone and you pull the trigger and then the blood bag goes out of them. You're still pointing a, a weapon at someone and pulling the trigger and then there's an effect. And it, you know it's a special effect. But when you're in character, it's still, I don't know. It, so that stuck, me, that stuck with me, not for a long time, but like a good two, two or three weeks to a month, I was, I was disturbed by that. And most of the stuff I do, I'm not disturbed by, as in if I'm playing a Viking with an axe and slashing throats and stuff like that, it's, it's, it's not, you know. Yeah. But, but this one actually did give me those feelings like you know so it's a very powerful piece so and it's, it's it's won numerous awards and i'm really glad that it's out there and uh and i hope that it brings success to everyone that was involved in the project as well right and yeah and we go on to make more movies because that's that's basically what it's about right you want each movie to be a success so you didn't get on you get more work because it's not about money for me it's about the art um and the story I don't really care about money as such. Like everyone's got to eat and live, you know, but I'm, I'm all about the story. Right. Uh, and respecting the story and doing my best job to uh, portray a character authentically and realistically so that I don't ever drag anyone out of the moment. You know, I want every, everything that I do to be believable. So, but yeah, so penitent, is a hard watch, especially if you've served on the front line and you understand the mentality and the, the inner battles and demons and shit that you faced afterwards. Um, but it's, it was necessary to make, I think. So, but yeah, there you go. Do we have well, the trailer? We do have the trailer. Here we go. How can I help you today, Mr. Kelly? There's nothing really wrong. I'm just not sleeping very well. I could do with some tablets to help. Can you tell me how you feel, please? I just need something that can help me sleep. I see here that you've been discharged from the army. Is that anything to do with it?
Murdoch. War is the most despicable human condition ever created. Whatever you did at war stays with you forever. You did it to survive. And you did whatever you thought was right at the time. And no civilian will ever understand what you did or what you saw there. like um we had like at the premiere we had the boss the the ex-boss of the navy at the premiere didn't we is <laughs> like like so like the boss of the entire navy was at the film premiere and then like you know that's someone that i never expected to meet you know and like but we've had so much positive feedback from serving frontline soldiers and military and you know naval air force anyone that's worn a uniform and has has been involved in war you know um just say that we've done a respectful job and uh even to the sound of the gunfire um so in the firefight you didn't you, you didn't hear the gunfire in the trailer but in the actual movie the gunfire doesn't sound like hollywood gunfire because it's not it's real. So uh, all of the, the actual gunfire sound effects are the exact um, sounds of the exact weapon that they're using. So it doesn't sound real to a lot of people that don't know what gunfire sounds like, like what gunfire sounds like, you know, because it's not Hollywood, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's, I know it's pretty cool, but I just noticed after watching the trailer back, so I've watched it a, a while that I literally, the only appearance of me in the trailer is I just bummed the flag. There you go. <laughs> so I'm literally just lighting. Uh, it could have been a spliff. I don't know. You know, it's like, so I could have been still token at that point. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those. No, there's, there's, there's a little bit of a running um, thing that I created with the character is every time he does something murderous, he, he rolls a, a cigarette and there's blood on his hands. So he's, he's rolling a cigarette, uh, you know, and then he puts a cigarette in his mouth with the, you know, with blood of the victim on, on the cigarette paper mm. and, and lights it. And then Martin um, saw that and then mirrored that image of the rolling of the cigarette minus the blood uh, in a, with another character. I really like that. So the hairy guy in the middle of it with the dark hair isn't me. So it's uh, <laughs> that was someone else. So, but yeah, I was I was one there in in the green. So stood by the tank after just uh, killing a load of, um, you know, a load of Brits. And yeah, uh, and, that's and out other now people. on uh, physical and VOD. Sorry, uh, that's out now on physical. And yeah, VOD. It's on Amazon Prime, and it's also just on. Uh, it's it's. I bought a copy on Amazon. It's ridiculous to buy your own movie <laughs> but, you know it's like i that's how much i support the project um so yeah it's it's available on amazon but only in the us i think so if you you can get it if you're in the uk but you have to pay ridiculous amounts of we call it mug tax you know so to get it but i thought i'll buy it while i'm in the states because it's uh it's going to save me 10 bucks you know right. And, that, and let's face it, that's, uh, you know, that's a golden corral breakfast. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or, or a bottle of whiskey that you can put Sour Patch Kids in. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? No, I drank that one. I've still got the other two bottles, though, because it's been the longest lasting bottle of liquor that I've ever had. So I've still got the Carolina Reaper. No one knows what we're talking about. This is funny. I I've know. still got the Carolina Reaper vodka 
It was Carolina Reaper Chili Lime. And but the problem is when people come to my house now, they know I'm lying. So if I offer them a shot, they're like, mm, mm, no. <laughs> they just put it down. <laughs> and I also made uh, Carolina Reaper Fudge Rum, which I still have left over from last year. So I have half a bottle of each of those left. Nobody dares drink them. They are crazy. So I crazy. made some hot sauce out of Carolina Reapers. Yeah, yeah. And I think what's happened with when we put it in the, the liquor, the sugar of the sweets dissolved into the liquor. So when you, it's not like doing a hot sauce hit or anything like that. When you do a hit of sugary vodka with like uh, basically – a chocolate lime chili in it, it turns into like liquid napalm. So <laughs> when you shoot it, it coats the entire lining of your mouth, gets in your teeth, in your gums, in the top, and there is no escape. No escape. There's nothing that will get rid of that. Because it, it literally sticks to your, your skin. So uh, that's pretty damn hot. So right. yeah. I had a hot pepper martini once. Oh, once. Once. <laughs> Well, yeah. Well, it had mango in it, so that didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm all down for that. So well, I think, uh, just real quick, uh, the penitent is available on uh, for rent in Amazon uh, UK. Okay, uh, but you can buy the Blu-ray. I think yeah. it was twenty-two bucks. Yeah, right. So look at look at this. I'm only cute, clued in because I bought it. It's not like um, me and mine about the discussion. If you get interviewed, I'll push the push the DVD um, or the Blu-ray. I think the maddest thing is Martin even bought his own copy, and he was the one that wrote and directed. Right. <laughs> so yeah, you don't get anything for nothing from places. Like that. So, uh, well, you sometimes know. you got to support yourself. Right. Oh, completely. And it's like I'm supporting the film industry in. You know, I'm talking about the movie and like going to premieres and just, you know, chatting about him and then actually buying the film. It's like, uh, but the thing is, I'm if I'm proud of something, I'll buy it. Right. You know, it's, it's like, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I've done that I won't name, but I just haven't even seen because I want, uh, you know, you just get a vibe and you're just like, eh, I don't, I don't think this is my cup of tea, we would say, or my bag. And it's right. just only like just some jobs you you do for money because everyone's got to, everyone's got to eat. But you know, ninety percent of my work I do as a passion project. Um, it's because I really believe in that. So you know, I have so I wanted I, to yeah, go on. I want yeah I wanted to ask you you um you do appearances you know do you have a schedule in the states that of places you're going to be appearing at cons or no man I literally came over just to chill and see some friends and stuff like that. But if you want to hook me up, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I, life is an adventure. So I didn't really, I didn't really come over with that in mind. But yeah, I'm, I'm up for any kind of uh, comic cons and stuff like that. So, Cause I, I like visiting different places that I would never have visited. And the, and the USA is freaking huge, man. Right. So like, you only realize when you get in a car and try and drive across it, it's like, you know, like we're looking at booking, like you know, like those what what are those dodgy motels called, you know, the Norman Bates motels and stuff, you know, oh, Super Eight <laughs> Motel yeah, Six, same one, one of them, yeah, so. Super Eight, yeah, 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 yeah. Motel <laughs> Six, yeah, they're all the same, the ones with the sticky floors, yeah, yeah, exactly. You just yeah. drive past and you just think, how many people have been murdered in there? Like you know, it's <laughs> just, but that's just why I've, I've watched too many documentaries. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got about uh, five minutes left for everybody that's watching. So if you have a question, now's the time. Because otherwise, I mean, you snooze, you lose. I mean, it's just that simple. Because Leo yeah. has another show tonight, I know. I do, I do, I do. So uh, everybody watching, uh, we're going to be doing another live stream at 9 p.m. for the dorkening. And uh, I'm sure there will be a lot of good uh, nerdy dorky stuff to chat about. We'll have some fun. Uh, I was I was just gonna say you know you guys should do a crossover with Julian and his food channel you know maybe send him some uh, some edibles you know ah. well I've got, well like Seth Rogen edibles 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, that, that depends on what state I'm in, as in what US state I'm in. Plus, I want to work for Marvel and Disney again at some point. So may, maybe, I don't know, that would be a weird like I'd have to check my check with my agent. <laughs> I'd probably say no. What the fuck are you thinking? <laughs> no, but at, at minimum we're going to get you a bottle of our hot sauce. Oh man, yeah. that 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 would be awesome. So yeah. I'll put that on the channel. So yeah, you uh, respect yeah, we'll, we'll, him, mate. <laughs> he doesn't. You, you don't know me anything, man. You, you you're just good at being you. So you know. But no, yeah. He, yeah, you, you, I mean, everything I've seen, you're just, you are an amazing person. You you have an amazing career and an amazing career ahead of you. But yeah, the Food Channel is definitely if for all our people watching on our people and our fans, it's all in the it's in the it's in the show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. As long as Ben remembered to put them in there, I put them in there. <laughs> Right, right, right. It's, it's it's the, I'm, I'm hairy, booty guy. That's yep, it. The hairy, I'm, the hairy I'm, I'm not, guy. I'm not a celebrity on YouTube yet, which is is quite amusing. I just expected to start a YouTube channel and then, like, just that be it, like, it blow up within like two or three months or whatever. But it's like, but it's also it's it's quite a lot of hard work. So it's fun in the winter, but all I do with it really is is piss off my girlfriend by wanting to film everything I eat. You know, um, with, with it, and she's. <laughs> well, there could, there like, could, there could be worse things. Put the camera down right, now. Right. There could be worse things you're asking her to film. So, if it's the food, I think she. Well, I was it. just gonna say, you know, I mean, earlier he said he gave up, he gave up the the hot spicy nuts. So, I'm on a mission to find some hairy nuts for his hairy food channel. Hairy nuts. So, well, I've seen camel, <laughs> I've seen camel balls, and I've eaten mount, mountain horses. So you guys are going to have to go, you know, far to, you know, to see D's. Right, right. <laughs> and who knows, man? We'll we'll talk. Maybe maybe you'll see Harry Food Guy running on the network at some point. Yeah. Man, yeah. I'll, I'll be up for that. And get me on one of your shows. Like, I, I'm, I really want to do a voice for one of your shows. If you end up doing a live action thing. We have, yeah, we have a live action and we I'm, have a, a cartoon. I love the zombie genre and always have. So uh, I met George Romero. He's he's a like you know one of my earliest um, influences. So, but um, I'd like to apologise for um, talking over any questions you may have had. No, oh no, man, you're good. No need to apologise. I mean, we got the questions in the target points that we wanted, which was. Vikings Valhalla being on multiple shows, Curse Doc Martin, um, you know, pet, pet waxing pet, nostrils, waxing your nostrils. Yeah. You know, <laughs> eating, eating, you know, mealworms that are still, as you say, wiggling. I, 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 don't, said, I don't ever think... wax your balls. That hurts like fucking. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 unless it's for a movie. So. Ben, I didn't well, think you were a Doc Martin fan. Um, you, d you don't know a lot about me. So, zombies. <laughs> I I I watch I watch some really really weird stuff. Um, who doesn't? So no, I mean, we, yeah, is this a confessional moment? Just a little bit. There we go. The okay. confession. The confession is over. Uh, yeah, but Doc Martin, no, you have the floor. I'm interested. <laughs> nope. Nope. What am I no, watching? And thank right you, now? Leo. I'm gonna. I want to thank Leo for putting uh, "Wrong Turn" the new one up on. Uh, I watched that today. Oh, oh you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Pluther. Oh, yeah. th thank Pluther. you for putting up. The, the, yeah. Pluther. Pluther. I said Pluther. What did you think I said? No, somebody said something else. I said oh, I have an I? itch. So I'm going to give you guys something to keep an eye out on uh, that is going to be in production next year. There's uh, a horror film. Uh, the, the Sizzler trailer will be released next year. And it's called Moon Eyes. And it's set in 1829. And um, it's about... Um, it's about two greedy um, prospectors. So, uh, uh, like gold prospectors. And um, like uh, the native... 
um, Indians, and it's done, it's, it's done very respectfully um, based on old folklore and stuff like that, and like and based on historical fact. So it's really exciting for me, uh, you know, to you know have, have helped with the Sizzler trailer. And but the Sizzler trailer is there as a fundraiser because it's another independent movie, mm -hmm. but it's an independent movie that needs to be made um, because the writing is amazing. Uh, the cast so far are absolutely phenomenal. Um, so it was an honor to work with um, a, a, a Cherokee native on on land that was owned by. Uh, we actually filmed it in Cherokee. So oh, nice. he gave me this um, bandana. So this is a, a, the actual Cherokee colors. So I'm wearing that with pride. So, and also underneath that bandana is uh, the safety for Sarah.org thing. Yeah. And Sarah was um, killed in 2014 in a filming accident. Um, and I met her brother, Eric, um, a few weeks ago now, and we became like instant buddies and stuff like that. But she was killed on, I can't remember the name of the movie, but safetyforsarah.org. So if you want to support that, that's something that's close to my heart because film safety is is paramount, especially with what happened with Russ and stuff. But Sarah was killed on the railroad track yeah. um, when she was sent back to... She was told that it was not a live track, track, it was dead, and the whole film crew were, but uh, the fact is the producer lied, and it was a live track, and she got killed, and a lot of people uh, were injured when a train came through and smashed them all up. Yeah. So, so, um, so, yeah, like, safety on set is paramount, because I do work with a lot of independent movies, because I love them, and I love supporting new and up-and-coming um, films and projects that I feel that aren't necessarily Hollywood but still should be out there. Hollywood is everything as such when it comes to the stories and stuff like that. It's, um, you know, I think there's uh, some of the, the stories in the independent world are much more powerful than anything Hollywood want to produce because they just think about bank, right? you know, uh, and entertainment and colours. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's entertainment. It's all entertainment. But it's like, you know, when you go to a, a library and there's the fiction section and the fact section, that's the way I look at Hollywood and indie movies. It depends what you want to watch and what you want to read or whatever. So, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I'm digressing. So keep an eye out for Moon Eyes um, because that Sizzler trailer is coming out. And it's there to try and raise money to get this, you know, first time um, writer and director who was an animator doing his first live action piece. So I just want to say that I'm supporting that project. Okay. Excellent. And, uh, now, aren't you involved in another horror movie uh, called Election Night? Yeah, actually, I forgot to talk about that. Jesus. The, the worst <laughs> thing is, when you do so many projects and they take a couple of years to come out, you forget that the that what you've done, and you, which is great, from uh, like when you're sitting down watching it, because you forget it, all the nuances and and the subtleties in the character or whatever. Uh, but yeah, the, it was a home invasion movie called The Election Night. I think that's on uh, Amazon as well. So there you go. There's another trailer you need to find within the next thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, that probably won't happen. Won't happen. No, 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 no. But. It's the, everything, it's the, everything you need to know about this amazing gentleman is in the show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. But you are more than welcome to go over to his IMDb. Everything he's been in is there. You can just click the button. Just click, click. Oh, look, election light. Click, and it's right there for you. It, amongst if, if, all you want a, if you want a concise list, there's if you if you go on to starnow.com slash Julian Seeger, You'll actually see that I've been in three times more than I've been on IMDb. So that's my that's my honesty list. I so. think that I think that's actually in the show notes up above or down below. Oh, okay. That's where the porn ones are listed, right? Sorry? That's where the, the dirty movies are listed, right? Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, the ones right. where I'm wearing weird satanic horns and stuff. Yeah, all those ones. Yeah. Right, right, right. On that note, Leo. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, we're going to wrap things up. Uh, you know, as Ben said, my name is Leo. I'm the monkey behind. Uh, blah, 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 but that's all, folks. Uh, <laughs> I'm the monkey behind. Wait, 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 that's all, folks. <laughs> Uh, I run the Dorkening Podcast Network. We got a ton of shows on the network. There's a lot of awesome people doing a lot of awesome stuff. So head on over to thedorkening.com, which you can see all the latest episodes there. And uh, we're going to be doing another live show uh, at 9 p.m. tonight. So, you know, stick around. We're going to be talking about some cool stuff. And uh, with that being said, Julian, where do you like people interacting with you on social media? Um, Instagram is cool because that's like kind of the real me. As in, it's just random shit, which is the real me, actually. So, uh, but also on Facebook, I have an official page, which is Julian Seeger. So, you know, but I, I tend to, but also with the, um, I think I answer more people on YouTube. So if you want to follow me on YouTube, I pretty much answer every remark on the, the channel because it's a fairly new thing for me. So that's Harry Foodie Guy. So, yeah. So if you if you if you're talking to me on some of the other channels, you might get a moderator uh, 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 with a polite answer. But foodie guy is it's all me, much to my shame. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Jeffrey. Well, you, you did say hairy foodie guy, not fruity guy, right? No, no, yeah, yeah, it's, it's foodie, yeah, not fu fruity. Right, okay. I right. don't eat much fruit. <laughs> Uh, as far as us, uh, stillpoking.com or Facebook, Poking with the Dead. Um, I'm old as dust, so I don't do the Instagram and stuff. Ben will take care of that, though, if you want to follow us on Instagram. And I think there's a Twitter and there's all kinds of shit. Uh, but stillpoking.com, all our links will be right there. I want to thank Julian for uh, joining us tonight. It was a pleasure and an honor. Thank you very much. No problem, man. Maybe I can come back and actually answer questions next time. Listen, Jeff. Oh, you, you only can, get one shot, dude. Jeff, you can kiss his ass all you want, but if he kills you, you're still not going to Valhalla. So, uh, you know, uh, sorry. Actually, actually, well, if, you, if you want to do some uh, voiceover stuff, we're uh, we're we we do little skits every now and then on our one of our comic shows. Man, I 100 percent do. It's like it's so easy. I love my voiceover stuff. As in, it's so much easier than driving somewhere, getting in a costume, doing stunt rehearsals and stuff like that. You know, I can just record most of them on my phone. So, yeah, I'm down so with what, that. What Julian can do is just put me on a boat, light me on fire, and push me out to sea. Yeah, yeah, that that that, that was planned uh, for for the actual show, but that, that scene got cut. So that was uh, actually planned. It actually ended up on the editing room floor. Yeah, it did. <laughs> so, Leo's like my, my career. <laughs> When Leo close out, closes out the show, Julian, just hang tight. Don't disappear on us. No problem, man. So we're going to go backstage. But, yeah, so like Jeff said, stilltoking.com. You can find out everything you need to know about us. You can rewatch this show, all our past shows there. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was it was amazing having Julian here. Uh, one of my favorite shows so far in, in three years, most definitely. Boom, and, thank you. To, uh, to all our veterans and first responders, we want to thank you for doing what you do so people like us can do what we do. Stay safe. We're out of here. We'll see you next week. Bye.